have been braincast about memory, about learning, about synapses, about neurodidactics. But there hasn't been any braincast about any school yet. Till now. Here we are at Turingia International School at TIS, the school of my daughter. She just went there for one day and then decided that it was time for her to leave kindergarten and go to early primary school to Vorschule. And now she is telling me when I'm singing the wrong lyrics, which is a little embarrassing, but it is quite impressive as well. So I had to do an episode about this school. And with me is the head of the school, Mr. Armstrong. So Mr. Armstrong, what does the head of the school think about the head, the brain? Our educational approach is a very progressive approach and uh, the, the educational values that we use are based upon uh, a modern understanding of how the brain works. I'm also teaching in class and at the moment we're looking at um, complexity theory. Um, we're looking at how it's important to understand a difference between complicated things and complex things. A complicated thing would be a jet engine. Extremely complicated, lots of wires, but controlled by a team of designers. A complex system comprises lots of different individual things that are interacting together. I do know about brains that they're made of neurons. Millions and billions of them, right? And human consciousness, there's no organ for it. Human consciousness is a structure created by the interaction of all of those neurons, right? Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> True. But it's the same thing in a learning environment too. If we have 15 children in the class, each of those are independent units. The classroom learning environment is the interaction of all of those children with each other and with the class. So in our classroom, we recognize that we have a, a complex learning environment, like, like with the brain, <laughs> and uh, we build that into our planning for learning strategies. How can we influence this, these interactions, this complex system, to create a learning environment that will be optimal for the development of each of these individual brains. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us something about how this school is different from other schools. There are many differences, but I think probably the first thing that anybody would notice coming into the school is that we speak English. Many of our teachers are from native English-speaking countries, from America, from Britain, Australia. Of course, our German teachers are from Germany and our French teacher is from France. Uh, but mostly children are learning uh, English. Of course, when many children first come to the school, they don't speak English. And so we have a special classes for children to learn English. But when they've been here for a year or two or three, then they become fluent in English. Most of our students graduate with bilingual diplomas in both English and German. And sometimes they have another language as well. But all of our classes are in English. International schools need to be certificated. What's behind that? Our program here is the International Baccalaureate program. That means that students are, are studying for those examinations. And when they leave here, age 18, they have an International uh, Baccalaureate diploma. Um, this is recognized worldwide. Students can and do go to universities in many different countries. Many of our students go to university in Germany, others go to Britain, others go to the US. Um, if you want to study in China, no problem at all. The IB is the most uh, well-known international qualification in the world. It also enables students to get their regular German um, uh, qualifications too, so it's recognized by the German government. So this is an important point. There is no problem in studying on a German university? No, not at all. Uh, roughly 50% of our students leave here and go to German university. The program that we run, the diploma program, is very highly recognized in Germany. Universities are very keen to have students who've done the IB because the IB has a, a, a strong reputation for preparing students very well to go to universities. It's not just an academic program. Students do many other things in addition to their regular, regular academics that prepare them very well for university life, the social life as well as the <laughs> academic life. What got me when we were deciding about sending our daughter to this school were the values. I was quite impressed that you want your students to learn more than just facts. Well, we're an international school and um, our values in a sense, are all about internationalism. But what does internationalism mean? According to uh, our school and also according to the International Baccalaureate, an international person is not necessarily somebody who's lived in 46 countries in the past 46 weeks, um, but is somebody who has a certain set of attributes. We believe that uh, um, uh, an international person is somebody who's uh, an inquirer in the way that they think. 
So they're not closed-minded, they're not set in the way they see. They're very open to new ideas, to exploring new ideas in an investigative manner. Others are tolerance and caring towards other people. We have different uh, students from different cultures, different countries in our school, and so we, we treasure that uh, kind of more cosmopolitan approach towards education. We make the most of understanding different cultures. I think internationalism in its broadest sense of being a person who is a truly global citizen. Well, that's what she'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing less. <laughs> There are a lot of great concepts for primary schools in Germany. Seems the problem is upper school, and especially from 10th grade on when it comes to the high school diploma. When I talk to Waldorf students, they have to learn and learn and learn and no time for anything else in the last two years on. Is it the same in this school? Well, clearly different schools have different um, uh, educational values. And we have uh, quite unique educational values. If you compare it to the Waldorfschule, for instance, you could say that both our system and the Waldorfschule uh, system um, value student autonomy, students thinking for themselves. But in the Waldorfschule, students will be a lot more free in the way that they learn things and the way they organize their day. In our school, we talk about our curriculum as being uh, guided inquiry. So although, t although students are learning to be uh, autonomous and to think for themselves and to be articulate and to do presentations and come up with their own ideas and explore different hypotheses, so all the way from grade six, all the way through grade 12, when students graduate, teachers are leading students through this gradual work. So yes, our students work hard when they're 17, 18 years old, no, no question about it, but they work hard all the way through. And the teachers are guiding them. The teachers are teaching the skills of being an inquirer being a research, being an autonomous person, as opposed to just letting the kids discover it for themselves. Ours is not a free discovery school. Ours is a let's learn how to be a researcher, how to be a, an open-minded thinker uh, in a certain type of um, supportive environment. To run a pizzeria, for, <laughs> for example. <laughs> right, right, of course. You know, I mean, if you're a business person, you need to have certain kinds of uh, free thinking skills to be able to come up with new ideas. So. Uh, I mean, most of our, in fact, all of our students go to university and these kind of skills are very useful when they move into their careers later because not only will they have a good uh, graduation from school and not only a good degree, but they're well set in their, their thinking, their mindset to be able to try all different types of careers. Um, I was living in China last year and I met many German people who are very fluent, very um, uh, free thinkers. They had exciting careers. Um, not necessarily because they passed their examinations, but because they were able to think in a, in a dynamic way. This is what we're teaching our, our children. So yeah, if they want to run a pizza pizzeria, I'm sure they'd have the skills for that too. <laughs> it is quite a topic in private schools that you have to pay for them. Huge amounts of money. Isn't that so here as well? Yeah. We are an expensive school. Our fees are quite high. Not as high. In fact, we are the cheapest international school in Germany, but they're still pretty high. Nevertheless, we don't want our educational program to be only accessible to people who are more affluent. We have a scholarship program so that anybody who earns 48,000 net or less can apply for a scholarship um, because we want families and students and parents in our school, not according to their income, but according to their values. If a parent um, shares our um, our educational values, our commitment to internationalism, understanding people from other cultures, our educational approach, the guided inquiry that I was talking about, then we would be very happy to have them here and we don't want money to get in the way. I hear that when people come to Thüringen um, from other countries, they prefer Weimar because of this school. Oh and really? I, <laughs> That's nice to hear. And I also heard um, that this is one of the best international schools in Germany. Is that true? Well, I th it depends on the criteria you use, of course. <laughs> Best is uh, according to what your values are. I have been to many international schools in Germany, either working there. I worked at Munich International School. I worked at Ulm International School. I visited um, several other uh, schools too. And um, I enjoy this school very much. We've got a lovely building here. We've got a fairly small school. We have 270 children only, K through 12 which means that there's a very nice family environment in the school. Everybody knows one another. 
Um, we very we have a very respectful teaching staff and parent community. We have wonderful children in the school. It's an excellent learning environment for our children. People are very happy in our school. So um, there's a feeling in the school of great contentment and satisfaction and and as well as dynamism and, and rigor and, and moving moving forward for the future. So, um, yeah, I've visited many schools and I'm extremely happy here. Of course, you know, many of the other international schools are in big cities and um, we have the luxury of living in a very beautiful environment too. And... Um, and uh, so I, I do think that we have an excellent school here, yes. That's what I felt from the first second on. There were children laughing. They were, they were um, funny but bold as well. They looked happy. I liked to go here. I didn't like to go to my school okay. back then. I think another um, important value in our school is that we, are, we call ourselves a student-centered school. The children are at the center of everything that we do. That sounds kind of obvious, but actually in a regular school, if you think about the normal classroom, who's in charge of that classroom? Is it the children? Mm. Is it the teacher? Or is it the textbook? It's usually the textbook, actually, written by some expert somewhere else, because the textbook is telling the teacher what to do and telling what the children... But in our school, it's children's learning that is focused. So although we have a broad curriculum that the children are working towards that is very rigorous, um, the way children get there is dependent upon their own learning needs. So it could be that we have a goal here, but we have, you know, 15 children in a class all in different places. The teacher is not just teaching this. The teacher is enabling each of these children to come here along their own learning path. So it's a very individualized, student-centered approach towards learning and, uh, and achievement. Most of the teachers come from somewhere in the world. How about the pupils? Do we have um, many, maybe too many German pupils? We do have a lot of German. About 80% of our families have at least one German parent. But um, uh, um, the other 20% come from different countries, different continents, actually. Uh, a number of our German families are mixed nationality, you know, one German, one other country. Um, so, yes, there's a strong uh, German cultural element in the school. I think that's a great quality for our school in the sense that the people who are coming here are not coming here as Germans. They're coming here because they share the values of the school. They believe in internationalism. And in fact, many of our German families are very keen on having international careers in the future. You know, they're preparing their families to either go work abroad or they want their children to have the opportunity to go study in a university in another country. And uh, so our families are very um, globally minded. Our cultural focus of the school is not so much on only on Germany, even though we have 80 percent of Germans. Um, it's upon celebrating internationalism, understanding other cultures around the world and um, and being, yeah, as I said before, being global citizens. <laughs>